Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. On the 4th of July 2020, the United States of America will celebrate Independence Day, and in this year the day would have been celebrated 244 times, meaning that it could be seen that in 2020, the nation of the United States of America will in fact be 244 years old. And while in our measly human years that seems like an incredibly long time, in the grand scheme of countries, that's no time at all. Here's a picture of Arundel Castle, which is somewhat near to where I live. Construction on this castle is believed to have started around 1070 AD, which is almost 1,000 years ago. This castle in a village in Sussex is older than the nation that is seen by many as the most powerful nation in the world. You made some terrific stuff, America, but you're a baby. A big, strong baby, however. And while the USA may not even be a quarter of a millennium years old yet, that doesn't mean that the land that makes up the Americas all of a sudden rose out the Atlantic 244 years ago, with Washington at all all just ready to get things going. The land has been there for quite some time, putting it mildly. And likewise, it's not like this land was just empty up until 1776. We all know the tales of Columbus and other Europeans quote unquote discovering America and colonizing it. In fact, it's believed the landmass we now call the United States of America had been inhabited for 15,000 years at least. We know for sure people were comfortably living here at that time, so it's easily argued that they were here way before that. Perhaps people were living in the Americas 20, 30, or even 40,000 years ago. Make no mistake, while the USA may be quite young, the Americas, as we call it now, is just as ancient as the rest of the world. And these people who were living in this land all this time ago were of course various tribes and groups of people that we now refer to as Native Americans. There are so many Native American related videos I want to make as Native Americans and names just seem to have a deep relationship in history. From the names of various tribes, to the naming traditions that these tribes have within them, to the names outsiders have given them, such as Red Indian and of course the name I've used myself, Native American. I understand this is still a hotly debated issue, and many find the term Native American to be incorrect as these people were natives of America. This is definitely a topic that can have a video onto itself. Apologies if this upsets anyone, please let me know down in the comments if this does and why. I'd love to understand more about the Native American nomenclature conundrum and get an American perspective on the situation. News on this topic doesn't travel across the Atlantic too often. Before Europeans arrived, the Native Americans lived in various tribes across the land who would have been broken up into smaller bands. These tribes and bands would have been nomadic people, meaning instead of having a single homeland, they would be constantly on the move, with tribes moving six to eight times a year. This was because they lived off the land in hunter-gatherer lifestyles, had to follow migrating animals like the buffalo, and they believed that their gods wanted them to live a life of continued movement, and their settlements allowed them to move easily. Native Americans lived in teepees, which could be taken down for movement in minutes. And while they resided in a land that we now call America, they for sure would have not called it that. The name America derives from the name of the Italian explorer Amelago Vespucci. He visited the land too after Columbus, and he was the one who had the idea that the land wasn't part of Asia as Columbus had thought, but rather an entirely new part of the world, so he dubbed it fittingly the New World. Amerigo's ventures into the New World were in 1492, and in 1507, German cartographer Martin Wolitzimoller created a New World map and labelled part of modern day South America as America, in honour of the Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci. That's the abridged story anyway, I have a whole video going into this story in way more detail. So I'm sure you can understand as to why the Native Americans wouldn't have used this name of America. It's the name that simply didn't exist when the Native Americans were the ones solely on the land, before any Europeans came to the land and thrust this name upon it. So it makes you wonder, if the name America didn't exist for this land when the Native Americans resided solely on it, then what name did they have for the land that we now call America? Well, they kind of did and didn't have a name for the land. Researching into this question brought up a myriad of answers. We must remember that while we often call these people people simply Native Americans and have a set generic image in our minds for them, that couldn't be further from the truth. Doing that would be like simply branding everyone who lives in Europe as just European, with no other specific titles like French or English. As of right now, the USA recognises 475 different tribes. This includes the likes of the more well-known tribes like the Cherokee, Navajo, Sioux and various Apache tribes. All these tribes have a variety of different cultures, traditions and languages, which we'll talk about more in a moment. 
It's unknown how much these various tribes would have known about each other. I read that at most a tribe would have known about the tribes nearest to them, and they could have been friendly and traded with them, or even seen them as a threat. As for further afield tribes, it's tough to say. They may not have known that these other tribes even existed, or that the land they lived on was even there. Also, as we mentioned, these tribes would have been nomadic, so it could be argued that they wouldn't have named the land as they wouldn't have had enough time to get attached to it and consider it a home before they were on the move again. It's said that because they wouldn't have had a geographical grasp of the land they were on as a whole, the fact they lived in various somewhat insular tribes, and due to their nomadic lifestyle, they simply wouldn't have had an all-encompassing name for what we now call America. They wouldn't have had any kind of concept of nations as we do right now, or even continents. Many of us see the Americas as two different continents, North America and South America, and of course all this time there would have been natives in what we call today North America and South America, and these people would have interacted, but a tribe from modern North America interacting with a tribe from modern South America wouldn't mean any different than two different North American tribes interacting with one another. And of course there's the language issue. There are hundreds of different Native American languages that various tribes speak and would have spoke, and these languages would have had their own words for things like land and earth. In example, the Navajo word for land is Kia. Words like this could be seen as a Native American name for America, as it technically is a noun used to refer to the land that we now call America. However, it would be kind of boring if I ended this video here by saying saying that no, they didn't have any names for the land. And luckily for us, we can delve into the history books and find some names that were bestowed upon the land by tribes from both modern day North and South America. I mean, this does make sense. Naming things is a basic human enjoyment, I feel, and it would have been impossible to simply not give a title to the land you're on. At least I think so anyway. Though a lot of these names may have only initially referred to a part of the landmass of modern day America. While it would have been all the land to them, we now know it was just a small part of the land. Though it seems some of these names have retro actively become used to refer to the entirety of North or South America, or the entirety of the Americas. Though what's interesting about a lot of these names is they don't derive from the traditional roots we see so often here on the channel. It's not like these names come from geographical landmarks or the name of a tribe, but instead it come from the mythology or lore of various Native American tribes, and some of them tend to be representations of the land that have a name, as opposed to a name for the land itself. That may sound a wee bit confusing, so it may make more sense when I talk about one of these names. In fact, it seems to be the most popular idea as to what the Native Americans called America, and that's with the name Mikinok Waju, which is a name used by a variety of tribes, including the Lenape and Iroquois, and this name translates into English as Turtle Island. Many tribes have stories about Turtle Island, and the idea is that our world is actually on the back of a giant turtle that's swimming through an endless ocean. Some even believe that North America looks like a turtle unto itself. The full story of Turtle Island varies from tribe to tribe, but a popular story is that the Great Spirit flooded the earth due to feuding people in hopes that life could start again anew. Some animals survived this flooding however, including the loon, the muskrat and of course the turtle. A life spirit named Nanabush survived too. Nanabush asked the surviving animals to dive deep into the flooded world to collect soil so he could create a new world. The loon initially failed, but when the muskrat tried, he reached the soil, but unfortunately died before he could make it back to the waters surface. Though he had soil in his hands, his death was not for nothing however, as Nanabush took this soil, placed it on the turtle's back and created life there. Thus the myth of the turtle island was born. Turtles with planets on their back appear in mythologies all around the world, and even in some fictions too. Another tale somewhat like this is from the Maya mythology with the name Zipakna. Once again, this isn't so much a name for the land, but the name for a mythological creature that became the land. In Maya mythology, Zipakna is the mountain god, and is often portrayed as a huge crocodile-like beast. I've also read that it's a personification of the earth's crust, which is why the earth can be so rugged, much like a crocodile's skin, and the spikes on his back became the mountains we have on our planet. So I'm sure you can understand as to why we could see this too as being a name for the Americas, as some of them believe their land was no more than the shell of a turtle, or the skin of a crocodile. There is another mythological character who is seen as a personification of the land too, but this one is a little less reptilian. That is with Pachamama. She derived from the Inca and other tribes from the Andes in South America. She is seen as looking after nature and natural disasters are seen as her punishing the humans for when they abuse the land too much. While she is from South American mythology, I've seen people using her to refer to North America too. You have probably noticed that the word Mama resides within her name, and that's because she is something of a Mother Earth character 
character. In fact, her name translates to mean world mother. A popular Native American name for the Americas that doesn't arrive from mythology is Abia Yala. This name comes from the Kuna people, who are indigenous to North and South America, specifically the modern countries of Panama and Colombia. Because it crosses over the North America South America divide that has been constructed, the name is seen being somewhat all encompassing for the Americas, and so has become a name for the land that Native Americans use for America. The name is thought to be able to translate into two different meanings. It either means land in its full maturity or land of vital blood. And finally, we have the Aztec term for their world, which at its peak covered the large area of Central America. The word they used to refer to their land was Simenahuac. This name for the land means land surrounded by water, and from looking at where the Aztecs resided, this really makes sense. Central America is slim, and the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are easily accessible from it, and the Aztecs knew about these oceans. However, they did not know that the land carried on for a great length into North and South America, so to them it was just land surrounded by water. We have tackled questions like this in the past, where we've asked what the ancient Egyptians called Egypt, and what the Celts would have called ancient Britain. In those scenarios, we were fortunate enough to arrive at some pretty concrete answers to those questions, and while we don't have one solid answer to what the Native Americans called America, we instead have a selection of different names for what different tribes and groups of people called their different parts of the Americas. The Americas and the United States in particular are known for their diversity, and it's amazing to see that diversity going this far back in time, with the many names the many people had for this land. Native American names for America were suggested by Aaron, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains to patron saint of Native American names for America. Do you have a good idea for someone else's name could be covered in a name explained video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running, and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explained on a monthly basis. Name Explained depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explained extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all, thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Ishi at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.